Welcome everybody to our last series on remaking your kitchen. This is our fifth week and I would say that it might be the most exciting when you think of adding just a little bit of glam or glimmer to your kitchen. You're going to be able to do that with the gilding that I'm going to show you how to do today. But we want to announce our winner from last week. Her name is Anna Patricia. Congratulations. And we also want to make sure that you make a comment or ask a question. But again, we are live here coming from Memphis to be able to be entered into our drawing for a faux marbling and a gilding kit. So that way you're gonna have, um, you'll be one step closer to being able to redo your kitchen and exactly like the hardware and the platters and things that I'm gonna show you how to do today. So one of the first things we're gonna start with, let's look at this picture right here, our inspiration picture. Look at this beautiful hardware. It's actually copper. So if you think about getting hardware that would be solid copper, it would be very, very expensive. So we love the idea of creating faux copper. That can be very easily done with gilding. Now, gilding to a lot of people scares them. I don't want it to scare you. I want you to realize how easy it is and you're not going to be able to get this look without gilding. I am not a fan of gold paint or copper paint or waxes they do not look as authentic. So here was some hardware that we actually purchased from the store. Most hardware stores um, will carry all kinds of hardware. You can actually go and get them at thrift stores. It's fun to do mismatched hardware as well. But I wanna show you how we just turned this hardware into copper. How fabulous is that? Copper is so in. A lot of you know, if you follow me on Instagram, I just got back from New York last night. Copper was everywhere, even mixing gold and copper. But I'm gonna go over the process of actually gilding for you really quickly. First thing you're gonna to need to start with is actually gilding size. That's S-I-Z-E. -E. This is actually like a gilding glue. That's the way I want you to think of it. It's very easy to use. It's water-based, it has no smell, and you're gonna see how it can literally transform so many things in your home. So I'm gonna take that top off, and I'm gonna use an artist brush, and I'm just gonna dip this the artist brush into the size. Make sure you offload it. You don't want to put on too much, but make sure your brush is saturated. And then as you brush it on, you're going to see that it's white. You're going to be able to notice that as you get it on where you're missing a place, because if you don't get the size everywhere, your gold leaf or your copper leaf isn't going to adhere. But because of um, our time and what we work with on these live events, I've actually applied my size everywhere on this piece, but I wanted to do just a little bit so you could see it. But as it dries, it's going to go clear. Now, this is a really important thing when you're gilding. I'm gonna do just a little bit of this so that way you can see it. One thing I really want you to make sure is, is that you get it everywhere that you don't leave out a place, get in good sunlight so you can see what you're doing, and then you've got to allow this to come to tack. That's T-A-C-K. Do not gild this yet. I want you to let this dry for about five or 10 minutes because that's what's going to allow it to come to tack. If I put the leaf on right after I brush this on, it's just gonna move around and it will never ever dry. So let's make sure that we have about 10 or 15 minutes for that to come to tack. Jill wants to know, are these products available where your paints are sold? Yes, that's a good question, Jill, and I'll repeat these so that way you can hear them. Um, the question is, are these products sold where my paint products are sold? Yes, as a rule, especially our boutiques will carry a lot of the gilding supplies and the size. A lot of Ace Hardware stores do as well. But I would call, if you go on our website, www.amyhowardhome.com, and call the local retailer near you and ask them if they have it, then I would say, would you be willing to order this for me? If they aren't or if they don't have it, you can go to our website and you can order it on there as well. So we have all the gilding supplies on there for you. Okay, so I need, I wanna show you what it is that we're gonna do. So I need some scissors. Looks like I've gotten my scissors. Hey! hey. I Every brought you some scissors. I'm so grateful you let me have some because usually I use the rounded ones. That's all I'm allowed to use at home. All right, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so if this is your first time watching, this is my husband, Gene, 
and he is in the studio with me and I will tell you um, it's like we're, we're in one big room everybody that works here we've been working on these projects this morning with Katie and with Sharon and we've come up with so many great ideas that we want to share with you but we were at Luckett Spring Fair this past weekend in um, Virginia and women were coming up to Gene saying that they enjoyed seeing him on the live events and our ratings go up when he's on here. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be fine for him to help me just a little bit. So, um, all right, so this is actually, this is my copper leaf. So as you see, this is copper and it does have a spine to it. So it's like a book and in between all these pieces of copper, they're actually pieces of tissue. Now watch, I'm gonna lift this up you see the tissue again? That's where they won't stick together. Now, I do want to make sure that I cut this. I'm not gonna wanna be using this entire book because I can have a whole lot of projects done with this. So I'm gonna look at about the size that this hardware is and I'm gonna cut it to fit. So holding this spine in place, I want you to cut lengthwise. Make sure you, that you have some nice sharp scissors and cut the entire book. And I'm gonna set that aside or put that in a little Tupperware container. Rosemary and I can... wants to know if this works on most surfaces. Great question, Rosemary. Rosemary's question is, will this work on most surfaces? Yes, you can gild glass, ceramic, um, resin. Most all of the um, projects that we do that we can use a one-step on, you can use this on as well. So watch what I'm doing. See how I'm holding this entire book of leaf together. I'm gonna fold back these sheets and I'm gonna press them down, folding them like that and holding it with my right hand because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, it's just gonna be the opposite. And then I'm gonna hold my finger here where the entire book can move. I don't wanna hold just one sheet. I'm holding the entire book. And then I'm gonna lay it down and with my left hand, I'm gonna start to press it down and see this piece of tissue that's sticking up here? I'm gonna pull it out. So with my left hand holding it in place, I'm gonna to start to burnish it. Now look what I'm doing. I am holding the entire book down as I burnish it. Now remember, this is live, so we wanna make sure that you ask questions or make comments or whatever, and I'm gonna answer them for you here. The, the gilding, this is not pure copper leaf, um, so I cannot acid etch it, but it is a metal composition that is colored leaf. So look at that already. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Now, see how I've got a little crack in here? I'm not gonna let that worry me. I'm just gonna go directly on top of it again. And it will crack a lot of times, see, because if you're working on a curved surface like that, so just take your leaf again, fold it back, Lay this back down over there, and then burnish it. So I always, I tell people, just as a rule, try to be very respectful of the leaf and don't touch it. I always want you to take the tissue and put on top of it and burnish it. That way you'll have a prettier gilding job. Now I'm gonna come back with a chip brush and I'm just gonna very softly just kinda go over the whole piece and get all the loose leaf off. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Copper is just so hot right now. It's such a great look. And here's the piece that I did earlier. So that way I just came back with just a little wet um, lint-free rag and just wipe it off so that way you get all the loose stuff off. And then I do like coming back with some bright idea. So this is actually a lacquer product that we have. It's a nitrocellulose lacquer. And I'll spray it on top of that just to seal it and protect it. And that way it won't tarnish at all and it's easy to keep clean. So here's a couple of little knobs. I love this. This is one that we were working on earlier. And to have fun with just creating different designs. And we just cut this in half with the tape, basically. So it's a visual interest. So that way you could just do copper or maybe silver leaf or gold leaf on your knobs. This is also great to do not only on your kitchen cabinets, but also on your furniture pieces that you're going to be working on. So 
I've got these um, pieces of hardware here that were kind of like the ones that we had last time um, in our kitchen. And I think these would look great with copper on them. I might even tape them off and allow this bronzing look to just show through. Now let's look over here. Remember our kitchen last time and that we did? So each week we have gone through the process of painting our cabinets, doing a backsplash, and painting our appliances. Now we want to see what our gilded hardware looks like on it. So let's come over here. So Gene, is, he's so helpful. This is one of the great things about having somebody that can do almost anything. But he's putting our hardware on here. That looks super, honey. Thank you. I really liked how that copper made the cabinets just pop. <clears throat> well, these aren't copper, honey. These are gold. Oh, I didn't have my glasses on. <laughs> All right, so this is like the copper that we had earlier. You see, this combination wouldn't look as good as it would with the linen. That's why we chose to do the gold on these handles. But see the difference in the color? The great thing about it is you can get these knobs as a rule from about one to four dollars a piece. It won't cost that much to be able to come back and just add the gilding to it and it totally makes it pop. Look what a transformation. Remember our floor cloths that we did? We have that in front of it. Here's our backsplash that we did. Um, and then we painted our cabinets. And of course I love what the transformation it did. It really made it come to life. And if you look at a lot of the, the kitchen and bathroom redos, you're going to see a lot of gilded accents. Hardware like this, if you buy it already done, is very, very expensive. This way, it's a great way to be able to do it as your DIY project. Look over here to the left. Sharon is such a great artist that we have here in the studio. She has such a great hand, and we, we had fun with getting these frames. These were actually from Habitat, and we took the old pictures out. And this one, we thought it would be fine to have a pop of white lacquer. We just lacquered directly on top of this. You know, we've gone over a lacquer a lot in this series. So we just did a pop of color there. We could have done it in anything. And remember the one-step paint, our chalk base paint with Amy Howard at home, you can use it also as a wall. So all we did is we mixed our custom gray. We mixed up a good man is hard to find in black and painted on the wall and it also became our chalkboard. Also, you want to make sure that when you're working on your hardware pieces that you do seal it. Now, remember we're live if you have any questions or comments. Sharon? Yes, um, Donna wants to thank you for coming to Luckett's for one thing. Um, she just wanted to say that she learned a lot from you and it was great to see you in person. Um, Michelle wanted to know um, what are the different ways that you can seal the hardware besides the... Um, I like idea. using the bright idea because I don't like seeing any brush strokes. If you're not careful when you're working with a metallic surface like this, if you come back and you're brushing across it, you'll have a tendency for brush strokes to show up a lot. So I prefer really using the bright idea. It'll give it a nice gloss. Um, and it's easily protected because this is a nitrocellulose lacquer. Now, I want to show you something that's really exciting. If you see platters that are very expensive in a lot of shops, of course, this is wedding season. We've got a wedding to attend this weekend. And when I go and I look at these platters, they'll run anywhere from $100 to $150 a piece. And this was a plate that we actually got at Goodwill. There were two of them, so it's allowing you to see what it looked like before. And all we did was add the copper leaf, which I'm getting ready to show you how to do that, and then we lacquered the back with our Amy Howard at Home White Perfection Lacquer. This is also a charger that we got at Goodwill that was brass. We don't really like the brass. So we just sprayed it with our chalky mineral spray. This gives it a beautiful matte finish. We like playing off of matte chalky finishes and metallic. So look at that charger underneath this plate. Isn't that a beautiful presentation for some cookies? The great thing about it is, as a rule, you can get these for about $1.80. So that way, you can take it to someone's house and say, keep this as my housewarming gift. 
with the food that you carry. So I love that. So let me show you how easy this is to recreate this look. So you'll notice here on the front, we just took a little marker that easily is gonna be able to be marked off, but it gave us kind of a line to be able to see where we want to actually place it. And I'm gonna be working on the back of the glass like this. Now here's something that you may have never thought about before, but I'm gonna take my size. This is what we actually put the leaf on our hardware piece earlier. And I'm gonna dip a natural sea wool sponge into the size like this. Now I've got a piece of cardboard and I'm gonna offload it just a little bit. I wanna make sure that I don't get too much on there, so always offload. We do this with our waxes, our paint, and everything. See the shape of that sponge? All of a sudden, that's going to allow me to get this beautiful look. Now watch. So as we're sponging this, I'm making sure that this little broken area is coming up. Let's take a look over here. See how this has been sponged? So where we get this size is where the copper leaf is actually going to adhere. So now let's come back over here. So I want to get it a little heavier in the center and then I'm going to have it come out on the, the sides where it looks like it's broken. And I want to make sure, this is very, very important, allow this to dry about 10 or 15 minutes. That's what we call coming to tack. Now I'm going to take my leaf Make sure that you clean your hands with this because it can get kind of sticky and it's going to stick to you. So remember, I had cut this down just a little bit and I'm going to lay this leaf. Sometimes I have to get to the edge just to kind of see where I put it. Holding it with your left hand, make sure that you're burnishing it with the right. Now, look what I've done. See how I've overlapped it? I don't want to butt the leaf up right next to it. I just want to make sure that I'm overlapping it, holding it with my left hand. I'm going to burnish the whole book at the same time. What colors do your foil come? So our gold leaf, silver leaf, copper leaf, and variegated copper are fabulous. Let me show you this. This is a variegated copper leaf. So variegated means, see how it's been turned? See that blue-green color? It's really, really beautiful. I like using this on